Today, our guest speaker is Tuya, Information Specialist from the University of Helsinki. Um, and just to give you a little bit of background information about Tuya, uh, Tuya is an Information Specialist, as I mentioned, and works at the Helsinki University Library, and her main duties have have to do with data management. She's part of data support network that they have at the University of Helsinki and also works at Tuli office that administrates the MP Tuli, uh, which for those who don't know, that's the Finnish instance for of the MP online for the whole Finland. And I'll just mute myself now, Tuya, and uh, you can go. Okay, so um, there has been some changes when it comes to data management process at the Academy of Finland, and that affects how we review DMPs at the University of Helsinki. So I'll, I'll be talking about that. Uh, and I'll say what kind of preparations we have made and kind of what kind of timeline we have planned, or, or uh, we're figuring out the timeline, and then the what kind of process we are planning at the University of Helsinki for these DMPs and what kind of help and support we have available. So the old and the new system. The, now the Academy of Finland, it's the most important research funder in Finland. And they have required that the researchers submit a DMP, the data management plan, from 2015. Uh, in the beginning, it was only part of the research plan and then after that it was a separate document um, and now since the last year 2020 the Academy of Finland has required in the application stage that uh, researchers they only write a short open science section in their research mm, research plan where they describe their data management practices and then the full length data management plan has to be submitted only after the researcher gets a positive funding decision. So when they get the when they get funding, then they have to write this full-length data management plan. And uh, the academy has three review panels that give decisions about these fundings and different schedules. So there's the biosciences, health and environment, culture and society, and natural sciences and engineering. And it's a good thing that they have a, a bit different schedules. These different panels it helps us to figure out the schedule at our our end. Now, in the old system, uh, every researcher had to write a full data management plan already in the application phase. And when they they wrote it, but they have no knowledge whether they will receive funding. So it, it was a bit frustrating for the researchers to write uh, a data management plan when they they, what, they don't even know whether their project is going to happen so it so that we have this new system it's actually it's a good thing and the new system um, in the application stage you only write a short description of data management in this open science section of the research plan it's about 10 to 15 rows only and then the full DMP is submitted after you get the positive funding decision and that's you have eight weeks time to to submit the data management plan and for that you also need the commitment of sites of research so in our case the University of Helsinki and that happens in the in the academic system this commitment of the site of research now uh, this system, this new system was already in place um, in some calls last year. So we we have practiced this, this system, how, how at our end we uh, review DMPs. So that's it's a good thing that we got to practice it a bit. So we have some <laughs> ideas what's what's going to happen. And then some, some background about the University of Helsinki. And, what we are planning to do and at what times. So at the University of Helsinki, we have this uh, data support network. Here you see some people who are in this network. 
and we have this service address for data support data support at helsinki.fi and through that one service address you reach not only the library but also it services legal affairs data protection research affairs now it's it's mainly uh, people from the library and our it services who uh, follow this um, email address and then we direct the questions to the right person if we don't know how to answer them so we have this data we've had this uh, data support network for, for quite a few years already and uh, now from this data support network we now have a dmp team that will then read the data management plans and there are several members from this data support network in this DMP team. People from the library, IT ser services, and then the research lawyers are also, so, there's some research lawyers are in the DMP team. Uh, now we have urged the researchers who have applied for funding from the Academy of Finland to start writing their DMPs early. And then we have sent some targeting emails for those who have applied for funding now, uh, already last year and now again in February we're going to send some some more emails uh, urging them to start writing their DMPs early because there's only eight weeks so you don't have time to learn about research data management in, in that time and we will also send information about our courses and the review service and also the service address. Now we are still uh, working on uh, fine-tuning our process, so there, there's still some things that we don't know how to do. Um, and we also have started to plan our webinars where we'll, we'll talk about research data management. And because of this um, COVID-19 situation, and we ha all have to be <laughs> working from home, uh, we don't know how we're going to have our data management workshops late in the spring. So we, we're going to have this new, that uh, old tooling network is going to have a meeting about, about, about this, how to have workshops online. So it's, it's not only the University of Helsinki who has this issue, but all the organizations will have to figure out how to have workshops online. So if you have any ideas on how to have workshops online, so send us email or contact us it's a tricky thing now the timeline at the academy's end so um already in september there's this uh, in the application phase you have to write the sort description of your data management now in april there is some at uh, the different panels give decisions about the researchers who get to the second phase and and those who don't get to the second phase they get a notification that they won't be getting funding this time and then in around may june these positive funding decisions are announced by these different panels and then the researchers have this eight weeks time to write their dmps and submit it to the academy's system, the SARA system. But, and then they also need this commitment of the site of research. And the, it's the vice deans who then who give this commitment of the site of research in the, in the SARA system. Now, of course, at the University of Helsinki, we follow the <laughs> timelines of the academy. We've already had some webinars uh, in August, September last year, where we um, informed researchers of these uh, changes and what they should write in the, in the short description of their data management practices in the research plan. We told them that to start writing their DMPs early. And then there was one uh, about, I think we had two tooling network meetings um, uh, where we talked about what different organizations are planning to do with regard to these, this, 
this, uh, this new process in uh, reviewing data management plans. And, and we're going to uh, send emails to all applicants beginning this year, uh, probably in the February. Um, and then we are timing our web webinars and workshops so that they, uh, researchers get um, the information that they need in order to write their data management plans in, in good time. And these webinars, research data management webinars, anyone can attend, attend them. And then of course we're going to have, where we have these research data management basic courses throughout the year and anyone can attend those as well. And then we're going to send another email to all those who get to the second phase, so who are almost there to receive the funding. And then for those who receive funding, we're going to have workshops and that's going to be around May, June. So that's what our spring will look like. And here's a, a timetable. <laughs> Maybe it makes it clear to we're trying to figure out where to put our webinars and courses when the decisions come from the review panels and when we are and when we are ready to then review the data management plan so so <laughs> it's it's a new process for us of course now um the the data management plan review process it's the data the dmp team that reviews the DMPs, and then we send, we, it's, there's going to be some back and forth communication with the researchers when it comes to the data management plans, what they have to um, think again, what they, maybe there, there are some problems with the data management plan. So that's going to happen. And, and because there is going to be quite a few of these data management plans, coming to us for review. Um, we're planning to have some kind of checklist or set of questions that we send to the researchers because that, that will make the reviewing process uh, quicker. And then the, we're got in, at the University of Helsinki, we have this sub-theory PROHA, which is a project management system, where we then um, give the information to the vice deans uh, what what how we have reviewed the data management plan that there's going to be some kind of traffic light system so red uh, this uh, data management plan has serious um, issues in it and uh, and it, it's risky to accept this data management plan yellow there are some issues but not so risky and green there are no risks in this data management plan. So the project can get underway. So we're going to have some kind of traffic light system in the, in our this project management system for the to communicate with the vice deans. And then the last thing that happens is the uh, researcher puts the data management plans into the academic system, the SARA system, and then the vice vice dean then checked yeah you know, gives the commitment of site of research again okay, also in the SARA system when everything is in order there. Uh, now this is a new system. Now now we have reviewed a lot of DMPs before. So as you see it's it's it has grown. So 2016 we reviewed something like 25 DMPs. And then it was eight, 83 and then 200. So there's been growth every year. And now um, uh, about 200 researchers receive funding from the Academy of Finland. So it's, we should review about 200 data management plans. So, well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so here are some things that we're still thinking about, as I mentioned earlier. How to have a workshop in Zoom? How do you do that? I know there are breakout rooms there. Maybe we'll 
use them in some way. But workshops are really, I would rather have them in a, in a physical, in some physical space where we are all together, not, not online. So we have to figure this out. And um, luckily we have this tool in network that helps us uh, in figuring that, this out. And then, of course, we're still working on this exact reviewing process. There are still some issues remaining. And we don't know, will the researchers start writing their DMPs early or will they wait right till, the, till they get the positive funding decision? So <laughs> we hope that they will start early. And then, of course, uh, because we're going to get about 200 DMPs and then we have to organize these webinars and we have our courses and workshops and then will we have enough resources? Hopefully. Now then what kind of help and support we have. Uh, as I mentioned, there's webinars about different research data man management uh, issues or the different issues in the data management plan are discussed in these webinars. And then we have this research data management basics there once a month throughout the year. And then um, and then the workshops, those are going to be targeted, especially for those who have received funding. So no, they're, they're not meant for researchers who, has, who haven't received funding. Because of course our resources are limited, so we have to target this especially. And we're going to have about three workshops per review panel. So that's about nine, nine workshops, something like that. And of course, this, this, I forgot to mention these webinars, we're going to record them and they're going to be available for researchers, you know, at, at least up till July. So if they can't, attend uh, this workshop, they will at least have some kind of material that they can look at. And then, of course, we have a research data management uh, guide page that teaches about research data management. And then we have a, a guide in Finnish, which is more a more basic guide. And then, of course, they are better tool. Uh, we recommend, of course, researchers that they use the Ampere tool. The Academy of Finland also recommends that the researchers use the Ampere tool. And then we have this service address. Um, and this is about our courses and lectures. And uh, in the Ampere tool, we of course have a uh, University of Helsinki's own, own guidance. And we're going to use it in, in our workshops. This damn bad tool. And this is our old uh, marketing um, campaign for review service. Okay. Okay, that was <laughs> that. Okay, thank you. Do you have any questions, Mika? Thank you. Thank you to you so much. This was so interesting and it's fantastic to see, you know, from I think 25 DMPs now you're receiving 200, which I guess is keeping you incredibly busy. Um, mm -hmm. We, rather than just me commenting on um, your wonderful presentation and uh, all you do, we, we received two comments. I don't know, Jenny, whether you would like to unmute yourself and just maybe give your suggestion to Soila. Oh, sorry, just to you. Hi. Um, so I've attended a couple of really successful workshops, not related to RDM, but using Mural. Um, I mm -hmm. think there's a couple of similar tools out there, but combining breakout rooms where we're split into smaller groups, um, you can put post-its in Mural. Um, so kind of like you would in a regular workshop, you can move them around, you can make them different colors. Um, you can start to rank them and then get people to vote on them as well. Um, and also the person who is doing the workshop or who is facilitating the workshop 
can bring people through the mural with them. Um, and then you also have a nice record at the end of what was discussed because everything is on the post-its. Um, so it has some really nice tools for trying to facilitate those kind of workshops in the, um, the digital environment. Oh, that sounds great. It, it, does it cost something? This I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I know I've been to two that have been provided through UCD. Um, one of them was actually a workshop about how to do workshops online, <laughs> which was really, yeah. really useful. Um, but uh, so I'm not sure if it costs anything or whether so maybe UCD have subscribed to it or whether um, there are free options out there. OK, we definitely have to look into that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it worked. It worked quite well, I have to say. Obviously, there's a bit of planning that goes into it in advance, where you set up the mural in advance of the workshop, and you kind of divide it into different sections that you want to work through. Um, but I've actually been thinking about using it myself for RDM workshops, um, where we get research groups together to help them to develop their DMP. Um, I'm not sure how we could do that in. I mean, you don't really want to do things like that for more than about two hours, I would think. Yeah, um, that's maximum. Definitely. Yeah, and I don't see how you could get through an entire data management plan in two hours. So obviously, there's a bit of thinking to be done around that as well. But um, I think the mural software might work really, really well. Yeah, well, we hope that the researchers who come to the workshops have already have have outlined the data management plan somehow. Okay. Written already, so they don't have to. <laughs> You know, it's lovely. We are receiving some more suggestions um, also from Patricia. Um, I don't know, Patricia, whether you would like to mention this too, or I can just share it via email. Um, yeah, like I, I haven't looked into the uh, the latest things in quite a while, but um, the Software Sustainability Institute here in the UK um, has put together some resources on uh, online training they work a lot with the um with the carpentry so these are like very interactive workshops that they've um switched uh to to virtual ones um, um so i've linked the blog post there and that blog post links to a more detailed resource um and like yeah we at the dcc at the start like put put something together as well but that can properly probably should be updated now that people have almost like one year of um, running various online resources. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but yeah, there, there there are things out there. Um, so um, I think I would I would always highlight that it it takes a lot of preparation, and that's the invisible part. And people, uh, you know, um, always think that you just show up for for two hours and run the two hours but uh, those two hours uh, need a, a lot of preparation should just keep that in mind and yeah don't don't feel bad if you're putting like really a lot of thinking into it because that makes your workshop better that's like um that, that would be my advice you always think like why am i like getting so nervous about this online thing but it's actually really worth um preparing properly Thank you, Patricia. Yeah, Kirsten says like Padlet for interactive exercises. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are good overviews out there for the various um, um, options that that are available, and yeah, might be worth to set some some time aside with your colleagues to play around with some of them and pick the one that you like best. Mm -hmm. So are these something that you can uh, use together with Zoom or Padlet? Because we're probably going to use Zoom. Because people are now acquainted with Zoom. Yeah, I think they are like basically um, things that, um, you know, it's a bit like Mentimeter or, or something, if you, mm. if you know that. So you basically... Um, send people out to a separate page where they can do the interactive stuff and then someone would would share the screen um, and and lead the discussion on that but you have that in an external system where it can be saved um, separately 
So I think like Zoom itself also has some kind of um, whiteboard and you can make annotations functions, but I think they are a little bit clunkier than um, some of some of the tools that have been recommended so far. So yeah, uh, it's worth looking um, um, looking at a few of those, uh, I would say. And don't feel bad if you spend some time with this. It will be um, well invested time because I, I think like virtual uh, workshops are probably here to stay, even if we are uh, moving back yeah. to more, uh, um, yeah, uh, to more normal life, I think. Yeah, Kirsten said, like, I can't recommend the Zoom commenting function. Even if you find it, I think it's like just really clunky to interact with the annotations. And I know that um, I've been in workshops where people just have like marked down on the, the wrong things just because they they weren't aware that they were clicking while they are clicking. So, um, yeah. yeah, probably something external is, is better. So we received also a question, um, other than just suggestion for you, um, from Maria, as, and just saying thank you to you, very interesting. Would you mind saying a few words about your monthly RDM basics course, such as content and length, and how you manage this with the staff? Uh, so these research data management basics, um, they're about two hours long, or or 90 minutes 90 minutes to two hours and well it's the uh it <laughs> tells about we, we talk about the basics of research data management like um all the ethical and legal issues and metadata um, where to store data um, and also data management planning all kinds of things the, you know everything you need to know about research data management we don't go into very deep it's just a an overview of what you need to know about research data management and well at, at the university of helsinki we have uh, four campuses and we try to have our research data management basic courses targeted to different uh disciplines the kind of try to talk about issues that are important in different disciplines but not we don't get very deep but in some way still thank you i don't know maria whether this answers your question yeah sorry i've got a bit of a noisy background yeah i was just curious about the format and if you target phd students or if it's researchers and just how you do it because it sounds like a really good idea but i just wasn't sure how you manage um Oh yeah, get it out there. <laughs> and yeah, if it's online now, yeah, of course. we've been online since what March, March last year. Yeah, same here. What, what year now? Almost. Um, yeah, um, it's for basically it's meant for researchers, but also for PhD students. Um, And and how many do you usually get for each session? Are they big groups uh, or small? Well, it varies a lot. Uh, sometimes it's uh, maybe five people. Sometimes it's twenty. Something like that. <laughs> Let's say from three to twenty. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And we try to keep them very, you know, interactive, so so that the participants get to ask questions and. You know, that kind of interaction is very important. I'm sure it's very appreciated. Okay, thank you very much. I don't know whether we have any more questions. Um, if not, um, we'll just take over and give you a few updates from our team. Uh, but if you if you think of any further questions, feel free to just drop them into the chat and we'll try to answer them as we go. Um, but big thank you again um, for a fantastic presentation and answering all the questions. It was very interesting. Um, I don't know, Patricia, whether you would like to take over and just maybe start with the updates. 
Uh, yeah. Um, so there are a few things that have happened um, in the DMP online team over the first, past uh, weeks and the Christmas period. Uh, one is uh, a change in staff. Um, uh, Sam Rust, which uh, some of you might know from our training sessions user groups, who was our um, lead developer, has uh, unfortunately left us. Um, uh, he has uh, started a new job with a US company. Um, that was like 10 days ago. So um, that means that the, the DMP online team is currently um, a bit smaller um, than expected and in, um, yeah, in, in lockdown with uh, the, the constraints that come through that. Um, we're looking at uh, uh, hiring a replacement, but um, yeah, with the current situation uh, and Brexit, uh, hiring f is, is a little bit more difficult at uh, the University at uh, Edinburgh than it usually is, so it uh, all takes a little bit longer. We're also looking at uh, getting um, extra resource in um, short short term for um smaller um aspects um but all that is like uh yeah still a little bit unclear at the moment so um we're 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 still here and keeping the service running um but anything that is like extra development might take um a, a little bit longer um but we'll we'll update you uh on on that um, as soon as we have like figured things out. Um, Magdalena, do you want to go over to Brexit? Shall I try to cover Brexit? <laughs> no, I'll just say a few sentences about this. So um, all our subscribers that were affected by this uh, were already in for via the emails, but just in a case you are joined by someone who is considering the subscription and is from European Union and wondering uh, what's happening on that end. Um, we previously were sharing so-called model clauses as we thought this will be required um, prior Brexit. Um, but in the meantime, there were some further deals between the UK and EU, and they basically agreed that for the interim period of six months, um, we will still not require um, anything to be signed uh, because EU and the UK will allow personal data transfers to continue uh, the way um, it was before without any additional safeguards. And if, one, if we hear um, once this changes, um, we'll be again in touch in due course. But currently, this is the situation for the six months, um, and we are working closely with our legal team to see what will be the next steps. We we do hope that our legal framework will basically remain the same because GDPR was under you know um, the EU up until now. So we really hope we won't be going through any major changes and um, EU and the UK will come to some common agreement where some further documents won't be needed or if so, hopefully it will be as smooth as possible. Um, would you like to just say maybe a few words about the... Yeah, one? and um, we, we kind of ha had hoped uh, initially that we um, can present a little bit of a of a roadmap already um, and um, give you an overview of the uh, the, the work that we are planning um, to to do in 2021. Um, but uh, due to the staff changes and um, some um, people being off um, sick, some of our colleagues in the US actually had. COVID-19, um, our planning has been postponed a little bit. Um, so we're hoping to get that to you in, in, in February with a bit of an overview um, of what's coming in 2021. Um, at the moment, we're finalizing Rails 5. So we're hoping that that actually, um, that, that updated version of DMP Online will go out um, to all the services that, um, so that's, DMP online and um, all the, the customized versions, um, DMP Thule, 
and we're also working with colleagues in um, in Melbourne. Um, so we hope to get those all onto the the latest version of um, the the code base with uh, running on Rails five um, in the next few weeks, and that's um, I think a really big milestone that has been um, that we have been working on since I joined this team. So it's been over half a year now um, that we've worked on on Rails 5 and um, once that's done we hope that we can um, yeah get on to the, the planning for the for the next bits um, and uh, as soon as we have that we'll let you know um, in the next drop-in uh, in the newsletter and um, we also should get something that is a bit like a user group together but uh, similar to um, what Tuya has mentioned, like, not entirely sure how to run this in a virtual uh, environment yet. That makes it useful for everyone. So that needs still a little bit of thinking, but um, we're not forgetting you, our community. I tried to get, the, get that uh, together. Um, on to the demo sessions that we've uh, introduced uh, late last year. There's one tomorrow, um, if you're free, in the morning. Um, Magdalena has posted everything in the chat. Um, so tomorrow it's on granting admin privileges and the, the various types that there are. Um, and then I think in February, if you want to save the date already, um, we're looking at usage dashboards. Um, so put that in your calendars. Um, the newsletter um, will be coming in the next few days. So we're just finalizing that. And that gives you a bit like of an overview of the various bits that we've just mentioned. And you get that in writing in your inboxes. Um, Magdalene also posted the recording from the December session where we had uh, Mary Donaldson from um, the University of of Glasgow introducing um, the the way they have like integrated DMP and the the their DMP process with their ethics process. So that's um, that was really interesting. If that's something that your institution is looking at, I'll uh, recommend if to to check out the recording if you haven't caught it live. And the last bit is. Um, uh, a reminder that so far all these sessions have been running on GoToMeeting, um, but um, with the University of Edinburgh now moving over to Zoom and Microsoft Teams, um, that means we will uh, not renew our, our license to GoToMeeting. So from next month uh, onward, um, the drop-in sessions will move to Zoom as well. Um, the demo sessions we already run in Zoom, but yeah, now also these drop-ins um, will move. Uh, all the yeah, all the times that you see is UK time. So if you're in a in a different time zone, you need to add a plus one or plus two. Um, so yeah, that's. Um, that will move, we'll send you the details. I think that makes it a bit more difficult to just put things out on Twitter because um, um, at least during our uh, anniversary week, we had some issues with Zoom bombing that um, I could do without in uh, in all these drop-in sessions. So um, yeah, just keep an eye uh, out for, um, for the login details and um, we hope that doesn't cause too much trouble for um, for everyone going forward that switch. Uh, but if it does, um, let us know and um, we'll investigate some of the other systems that the University of Edinburgh has bought licenses uh, for and maybe some of them are more suitable than, than Zoom for this kind of session. Good, then there's time for questions if there are any. Google has a comment. Yes, yeah, sorry. She probably just sees the horrible intruder outside. Let me mute myself. 
Can I yeah. say something? I can. Oops. Go ahead, Joachim. Yeah, uh, I was just wondering whether this change of uh, uh, to of rails in the background will also mean that you will switch to the API version one. Uh, yes, I think it does. Ray can shout at me if that's the wrong one, but yeah, that's um, part of the the um, package. So it will come with a, a few new features um, that that have been like that we have introduced, um, but not um, or tested and played around. Um, so we'll we'll send out a proper overview with um, what will what is new with Rails. Um, with the Rails 5 update. Um, I think like we also introduce Google Analytics um, uh, in, and an option to um, get some more usage data uh, via that, if that's something that your institution uses. Uh, and there are um, a few more features that I uh, now not, I'm not like having on the top of my list, but that will be, um, we will send out um, something, some proper, communication with what's new as part of this Rails 5 update. But yeah, API is one of these. The reason I'm asking is the, that we have built our local template on the version zero that is presently. So, uh, so maybe I will stop doing some development for the time being of that template since uh, Things might change. I I have seen uh, got a glimpse from from DMP tool in, in California yeah. what what it will look like. So so maybe that's um, when do you say I, this is coming already? Uh, we hope to get that actually out pretty soon, like uh, in the, like next two weeks ish. Okay. Uh, if I remember. Sam, who, Sam was our API expert, but if I remember what he said correctly, then the version zero will still be available and accessible. But I'll double check that. I'll we'll okay. go digging through the notes uh, and okay. make sure you're not losing, uh, you're not suddenly losing all of the work you've done. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Great. Okay. Yeah, good point there. Are there any more questions? Well, okay. If not, um, just a few more points. Uh, do not forget um, to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and subscribe to our monthly newsletter. I'm just sharing the links in the chat um, in order not to miss these drop-ins and other important info such as, you know, the up update about what will be coming with Rails 5 and things like this. Um, I would like to also invite you for our next drop-in uh, session, which will be on the 23rd of February. And our guest speaker will be Wayne Peters from Imperial College London. So you can already put this into your calendars. And I would like to say a big thank you um, to Tuya for presenting. Um, it was very lovely to have you as our guest speaker today. Um, and to Patricia, Ray, Marta for supporting me um, in running the session today. And I'm very much looking forward to see some of you hopefully tomorrow in our demo session. And if not, then hopefully next month in our next drop-in. Thank you very much and have a lovely rest of today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.